Simone, tell us a little. Simone made this great uh, <laughs> slide. I think it's awesome. These are these are our um, illustrations, sort of our staff photos on our website that were created when we launched in February 2021. And Simone created her own little um, bios underneath for each of us, uh, which let me see. Are I you think not ready? no, I, I have. <laughs> I think. Um, Jacoby, you want to talk about yours real quick because those those are those are good and very personal. Uh, well, I'm really happy to be here, everybody. Again, my name is Jacoby Cochran. Uh, for me, those three things are uh, a good kind of uh, gauge of who I am as a person. One, I grew up roller skating across the south side of Chicago, so it's a huge hobby of mine. Uh, debate and forensics is something that I did throughout college. If anybody has ever heard of speech team, I was a speech team geek in high school and college. And then lead pipes. It's one of the first topics we did on CityCast Chicago. There are 400,000 lead service lines in the city, the most of any major city in America. And uh, it pisses me off every single time I, I hear about it or I talk about it. Um, and so a lot of that passion you hear on the show really comes from just things in the city that excite me or upset me. Yeah, and that like curiosity and the way it is just like what makes Jacoby the perfect host because even though he knows the city inside and out, he's like, I didn't know about all these lead pipes that are screwing up our water. So we'll, we'll send you to that episode um, later. Simone, do you want to go? Yeah, uh, and I can sort of say, um, yeah, so I'm Simone, I'm the producer. That means uh, while Jacoby is the voice of the podcast, basically I kind of help push it out and make it happen. I am doing research, I'm booking guests, I am cutting tape, uh, which we don't have like a good digital, like we don't, we don't call it, you have to, so we still call it, call it cutting tape, even though I've never physically cut tape ever in my tape, audio you career. Still call it. Uh, Editing audio. Um, and so that's kind of, I work behind the scenes to kind of make that all happen. Um, ask me about government TV and sandwiches. I wrote all these things. These are all things that if you ask us about them, we're going to talk your ear off about it. I love really boring, wonky government stories. It's like my favorite thing to report. And I just get really excited about it. I watch an inordinate amount of TV um, for someone who has to cut as much tape as I do. Uh, and I have a grand unified theory of sandwiches. You can ask me about it afterwards if you want to, <laughs> if you want to get really bored really fast. Basically, everything is a sandwich in this theory. Everything. Food taxonomy is useless. <laughs> we don't need it. All foods are sandwiches. I think she thinks hot dogs are a sandwich. They are. I think that's that's controversial. Um, I'm Carrie Shepard, the lead producer. So essentially, I am like Simone, doing a lot of the same type of work, but I'm also essentially the editor and I'm doing, I'm their bosses. So I'm doing a lot of administrative stuff. Uh, we also, as I said, we have a daily newsletter and that's really important because our newsletter writer couldn't, Sydney Madden couldn't be here tonight, but she is, and the newsletter is just as integral and important to what we do and our mission of covering Chicago and reaching Chicago as the daily podcast is. They're, they both go out at 6 a.m. Uh, fashion, I don't know, I'll probably just talk about my own clothes. Feminism, I think that speaks for itself. I think farmers markets are terrible. I don't want to go. I hate the grocery store, so I definitely don't want to go spend more money outside. <laughs> I don't care about it. You know, this is kind of a, a thing we do talk about a lot, you know, in Chicago where it's food, 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 food. And I don't find talking about food that interesting. And I have like some issues with foodie culture, which I find can be sometimes a bit elitist and like exclusionary. So that's another topic. Maybe mine should have been fashion, feminism and food, but you know, <laughs> that's it. There, yeah, actually. yeah. So this is, um, this is, you guys probably saw this on the website. This is just kind of a quick, you know, one line tagline of who we are. Um, we launched in February, 2021. March, I'm so sorry. We started working there in February 2021. Uh, just a little background. I came from WBZ, which is the Chicago NPR station, where I was everything there. Um, I was a producer, showrunner, a reporter. My last job, I was a senior editor of news. Simone also comes from the public radio world. So many of us out there, so many, uh, from Seattle. And Simone is from Seattle, but moved back to Chicago for this job. Jacoby doesn't really come 
from the media world. He's an educator. He's so many things, but you were teaching, you were, you're a storyteller. So part of the storytelling scene. So we got thrown together by our bosses who, you know, um, sort of Simone was hired first in January, 2021. February 2021, February, and we launched our very first podcast on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. We didn't really plan it like that, but, and the newsletter as well at that time. And in the year and almost a half, 300 plus episodes, 300 plus newsletters, um, we were uh, called the Essential Chicago Podcast by Chicago Magazine, and then readers slash listeners... I love it. Okay, sorry, I'm hogging the mic. Um, we were voted best podcast of 2021 by Chicago Reader. So um, I feel like it's essential we put that out there and we tell you who we are. I feel like we should also say, if you have a question or a thought or Lost just in. we are like way going way too fast, please, God, interrupt us because we will not stop talking if you let us. I talk fast. I talk fast. Um, I think... Does everybody listen to podcasts? I think that's a weird assumption, actually. How do you listen daily to podcasts? Yeah, some daily listeners, couple. Are you guys listening like news, true crime? Like, yell out some genres for me, yeah, if you could. News, news? pop culture, history. Yeah, all right, we've got. Ah, right love answer. to hear it. <laughs> you're on the you're on the show tomorrow. Yeah, you're. <laughs> We're, we're going. What's a podcast? Yes. That's I love question. that question. That's this a is a question, question that is way more common than you would think, I, totally. I think. Um, a podcast it can be described in lots of ways. Uh, I like to describe it as radio on the internet. Um, so it's audio, the same, vaguely, the same kind of audio you would hear if you were listening to public radio or WBBM or something like that. Uh, but you get it on your phone or on your computer and you get to press play and you get to pick which episode, which topics and which hosts um, you want to spend your time with. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a great question. I'm really glad you asked. And podcasts, particularly ours, can be found uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And what's really cool about CityCast is that I like to think we evade genre, even though we're a news <laughs> podcast. We've done episodes that sound like true crime. We've done episodes that sound like sports. We've done deep history dives on, you know, the Bally's name in Chicago has been around since 1932 and is now coming back as a casino potentially in 2026. Um, and so depending on what day you listen to the show, you might get something completely different. And so one week could be brownies, the Shedd Aquarium, primary prep because, you know, voting June 28th for the Illinois primary is coming up. Uh, and, and so I like to think where everything that Chicago is and what that is is pretty elusive. Go ahead. What's the coolest thing that you would report on this podcast? <laughs> In 300 episodes? Yeah, that, that is a really great question. I think the coolest interview I've done to this point uh, was Stephen Colbert. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that I was actually talking to him because obviously, you know, people are just human beings. They just sit in more important meetings than others. And... Uh, he was one of those people who kind of made me feel very comfortable as a host, was very open. Uh, so it was really cool to, to have this uh, long conversation with him. But uh, one that's close to a lot of our hearts is uh, Steppen. Chicago Steppen is like this black dance that's like black ballroom. And it runs really deep in Chicago history to the point of most of us don't even know where it really comes from or how to actually do it. We just think we know what it is. And so I got to do this deep history with uh, this woman who's been stepping her entire life. And a family member was one of the like pioneers of the dance in Chicago. And that was really cool for me as somebody who thought they knew a lot about it. But turns out I didn't know all that much at all. And Simone was in that episode learning how to step. Yeah. We so a, we took we, a little dance lesson. Yeah. We there's, did. there's a gif. I've been stepping for 30 years. Simone's been stepping for 30 minutes and she is better than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you'll learn in that episode. Um, so here are some of the things that we will hear. I wrote this slide because I've been, like I said, I've been all these things and I've done public affairs journalism for a long time. And I have listened to a lot of public officials talk and talk and talk. And a lot of them 
who don't talk and need to talk and should talk. Um, and so I feel like with our podcast, especially with Jacoby driving it, asking the questions, leading the conversation, our conversations with public officials just sound different than those public radio ones or whatever. And actually this week was a very, I would really, really, really encourage you to go back. I mean, listen to all 300 episodes, but let's be <laughs> realistic. But like we had this fantastic episode Monday. I don't know if you all saw this, but uh, Alderwoman Jeanette Taylor from the 20th Ward, she had this viral tweet, went huge that she had applied for a public housing voucher in 1993, and she got a letter like last week. So 30 years she waited, right, to hear back from the Chicago Housing Authority. And her candor, but also the way she talked about her colleagues need to do better, and she had this fantastic quote of like, I make $105,000 a year, I have good health insurance and free dental, all because of you, you pay for that. If you're not making me do better, shame on you. And I felt like that was like, that is a real way that we think about what we do, about this is not just telling you information. We want you engaged in the process. We really like all of you with data, like we feel like civic engagement is like the, the backbone of what we do. Um, I chose these two episodes actually, this was, <laughs> I, man, you guys would probably know, but you know, the inspector general, it sounds like so snoozy, right? Like, what does the inspector general do? But a lot, <laughs> you know, and they try to stamp out corruption and, you know, uh, former Chicago inspector general, Joe Ferguson, he retired last October, I think after mm -hmm. like 11 years, he had done a lot of work about corruption in the Chicago police uh, department. He does, I mean, they do everything, public health, everything. So he had kind of been making the rounds a little bit with his interviews and he hit us up or I hit him up or something. And we, you know, I was like, oh, you know, we gotta be different because everyone's just gonna hear him do the same interview. And like for years I would hear someone on BZ and then WTTW and then, you know, BBM, they all sound, they say the same things, right? So we're like, we got to break him out of it. And right away, Jacoby got him out of it. He like sat down and he had a tie on because <laughs> he said, oh, I just was uh, in front of a congressional hearing about corruption or whatever. And you're like, well, okay, well, we've done nothing so far this morning. <laughs> and he like ripped and Jacoby's like, take that tie off. And he like rips his tie off and he's like immediately comfortable. And he is so candid and there's this great, part in the beginning i want to just simone's going to play this for you where like i don't think you're going to hear this kind of exchange anywhere else let's see if it works there's a curious thing about chicago that distinguishes its corruption from the corrupt the same corruption that exists everywhere else because the fact of the matter is is where money and power come together there's going to be corruption and i'll tell you every single one of us has a price and I'm thankful no one's ever found my price, right? That might be some of the most gangster shit I ever <laughs> like, like, seriously, this man just was like, I got a price. And he, he, and he thought that was like, Ferguson thought that was so funny. And then like, that was able to like, with this conversation we had where Jacoby could say that I think that like we sort of try to steer clear of sometimes in interviews of like Jacoby flat out said like look you have called the police racist you have reports saying that and like you know you've made it pretty clear you're pretty explicit and he he said yeah you know he was really honest because Jacoby gave him that space and that comfort but also I think because Jacoby made it very clear I think that's what we do really well that he knows Chicago and he knows it well and he knows all parts of it and he knows oh, there's a lot of bullshit that come out of these people's mouths and that he was speaking of. Recently, we interviewed uh, Chicago Public School CEO Pedro Martinez on budget cuts and just to sort of paraphrase, I won't do it justice, but he keeps saying over and over to Jacoby, this is the most equal, this is the most equal budget you're ever gonna see. And what, you know, kids, black and brown kids are gonna get so much more and you know and jacoby said i appreciate and it's not enough but it's not enough jacoby said i appreciate you saying it's not enough 
But when anybody, do you want you say what you said? It's gonna um, sound better. I, <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> say. Um, no, Kerry's right. He kept telling me that it's the most equitable CPS budget. In fact, they just released their proposal today, like nine point three billion dollars, and they say it's the most money spent on brown and black kids in the history of Chicago. And I told him, I appreciate you saying it's not enough, but if you've never spent enough money on a community, if you've never invested in black and brown, what does it mean to say this is the most? If you've never given them enough, it kind of feels uh, flat and, and ultimately a little bit like bullshit. It, it, it doesn't feel real. It's just something you can throw in our face and you could, even though we're not video, like you can't see the video of the interview, you can kind of hear it in his voice a little bit. His eyes go big, like, I didn't, I didn't think you were going to call me on that. I thought you were just going to accept that this on the paper feels like the most equitable. I didn't think you would call that BS to my face. And, and that's something that um, I really appreciate CityCast for giving me the platform to do. When I talk to some of my other colleagues in Chicago, they, they're always like, oh, I wish I could say that on CBS or... Some of them are even like, I wish I could retweet what you just tweeted. And I'm like, what do you mean? I, you can't even read. And so it's like they're, they are providing us the news and they're doing a great job. But I think we get, because we're a podcast, because we're a little different, we get to say things and ask different questions and, and be a little bit more, in my opinion, Chicago, because that's, that's how people I grew up with talk. So it's really refreshing to hear it. Question. So how do you think your particular, you know, genre of news can kind of poke a hole through the you know, uh, clamshell that the news as an outlet has become. Can be, yeah. I, I totally I totally hear what you're saying there. And I think what Jacoby is getting at in terms of like this is what Chicago sounds like, I think that is that is really the fine point of it. It's he gets to ask questions the way we all would ask questions as Chicagoans. When we hear the mayor talking, when we hear CPS C, uh, CEO Pedro Martinez talking, we're all thinking, are you serious right now? Is this really what you're telling me? This sounds like bullshit. And he actually gets to say on microphone, hey, this sounds like bullshit. Uh, you know, I think in partly it's the just the format itself, podcasting itself. It, it is intimate. It's we're right in your ear. Again, you're choosing to play us. Mm -hmm. um, we're not sort of uh, broadcasting out to sort of a it is a general audience, but it's not like we're not saying every single person has to listen to us. Um, and that's inherent to podcasting, but it's also, I think, an editorial decision that we have made and have cultivated as a team to say, you know, we see the same things you do in, in the media ecosystem and saying this is a way that we can get in and be different and push our colleagues and push those other outlets maybe to be a little more to be a, sh a little bit sharper and a little more honest. Um, and I, I think I think we're doing that. Yeah, I would say the journalistic principles, I don't know if there are any journalists in the room, are, are still there. Mm -hmm. We still have to adhere to them. I, you know, I, I still have to be worried if we're going to get sued, frankly, if Jacoby says something that's incorrect or whatever, which he does not do. Thank you. Um, but, you know, how do you, we do are able to say things that like, how do you argue with that? You're telling me black and brown kids in Chicago have always gotten the same. You can, that's, you know, that's not true. You can look at CBS budgets for 50 years. You can look at where our schools are. You can look at where our schools closed, you know, like those are all things that we can back up and verify. And that's not opinion. That's just us putting these people saying like, you know, Jacoby's talk, saying like, look, come on, like be real with me, right? Um, we're, but yes, the journalism is still there. This is not like opinion journalism. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think it's refreshing that Jacoby is able to go a little farther, but has, he's got the facts to back it up um, and not be so afraid to go there and to push it. Yeah. How are you able to ask questions like that? Like I'm sure it takes a lot of research. Right? <laughs> <laughs> how, does, how much time do you guys spend like before every podcast episode, before every you know, different interview, like doing that background research? That's a really good question. But it, it, that is a really good question. And some of it depends on how much time we have. Like our interview with Alderwoman Jeanette Taylor on Monday, we called her and we offered her multiple times to speak with us. And she said, I could talk at 40 minutes. So I have 40 minutes. Uh, I told Simone when we hopped on, in that 40 minutes, I probably read a good amount about CHA, probably 
seven or eight articles in that 40 minutes and went to check what were the top songs in 1993 when she originally filled out that CHA application. Um, but with Pedro Martinez, I, I had a little bit more time. I had to look through a little more dense uh, packets of numbers. Um, so, so a lot of it depends on what the interview is, how long it takes to prep. Um, you know, some you want to be really sharp on it. Some you want to keep that natural curiosity that you have. In terms of how do I ask questions that might seem offensive or might go a little further than some other journalists, I think that has a lot to do with like the environment we create. Um, you know, prior to that question, I'm gauging how far can I go with this person? How much do I need to, a phrase that you'll hear in tomorrow's show, how much do I need to butter the bread before I turn this into toast? You know what I'm saying? And, and, with, and with Martinez, you could see that he, at a certain point, he might've thought like, oh, this is gonna be easy. And then it switched and it was like, no, <laughs> it's not. But at that point he was kind of in it and, and, and comfortable. And so uh, some of that comes also back to just trust. You know, you have to trust that, that natural charm that you can pull this off. And it, it doesn't always work. I, I've had some interviews where I asked something, I could tell the person was like, and, and at that point you gotta make a choice. Do I stick with this line of questioning? Do I move to something else to sort of soften it? before I come back, but you know, I got two of the best producers in the game always there with me, kind of guiding me through the interviews. And so, um, you know, what you're hearing at the end of the day is not just all me coming there asking what I think is cool. It, it is a collaborative process. We're there with him. Yeah. In so real time. like in real time, right? So as producers, we do a lot of the prep, you know, and like, but we work with Jacoby, like in that instance, like with Jeanette Taylor, it was like Simone, you know, I got her cell, Simone calls her, you know, she's like, she can do it in 40 minutes. And because of the nature of the topic, this was so emotional. Like that's what people were responding to 30 years ago. Your life is so different in 30 years. You, when you wanted, when you applied for this voucher, it was meant to be like that. Jacoby, the idea was never to get a, give a history of Chicago housing authority. That's not what the episode was. It was like, tell us this experience. And that was, the personal was where we went with that. Did you have a question? Yeah. Are you familiar with City Bureau? Yes. 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 We yes. work with them. So yeah. Not, how, how do how do could you support each other? So the question was about City Bureau, uh, who I think has presented here at Shy Hack Night in the past. Shout out, Bettina. Yeah, uh, we 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 love City Bureau. They're a, 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 a local news nonprofit here in Chicago. And the question was about um, a: Are we familiar with them? And b: uh, How can we, do we support each other? And yeah, we, we work, we've had uh, a couple of their reporters on, we've worked with them uh, closely. We are sort of in partnership. That's something that we do a lot. Um, we have a lot of friends in the Chicago media ecosystem in general. You will hear their reporters on our show talking about their reporting, talking about things they're, they know about. You will also, we also do events with um, different organizations we uh you know jacoby is like out everywhere constantly all the time um making his uh, uh, uh rhetorical uh, skills putting them to use um so so yeah we love city bureau we love what they do i think uh you know we're still like looking at like how we can even grow those relationships even more and like you know, really kind of Im embed that the work that they do into what we do. But yeah, we, we've definitely worked with them before. Shout out to Sarah Conway. We just did an episode with her yeah. about the rise of labor movements and local tortillerias, particularly like El Milagro, Authentico Foods in Little Village. Uh, and Sarah did a lot of research and we got to sit down and, and talk with her about that. And we feature their documenters um, in mm -hmm. the newsletter with, with regularity. Yeah. We yeah. do a lot of swaps that way, like other who have similar missions. We don't do it with media organizations with whom we don't feel aligned, but they are about civic engagement, I think is maybe your point. And so we have shared our newsletter lists. Hey, you go and, you know, we've done that with a sports newsletter. You know, that's just being part of the system, being part of the ecosystem, to use Simone's word. Here is just sort of a sampling of some other things you'll hear. Um, you know, we always try to bring on compelling perspectives. We talked to Good Kids Mad City uh, about the curfew, um, Mayor Lori Lightfoot's plan, well, I guess now, now enacted, right? Yeah. Uh, to push the curfew back to 10 p.m. Uh, for uh, 17 and under and, and 
you know, banning kids out of Millennium Park after 6 p.m. Um, that was a really powerful interview. We always were, again, with that civic engagement thing, we're trying to find news you can use. We did an episode about not the candidates, not uh, the politics, but literally how do you vote in Chicago? Um, and then we do a lot of history and culture. Jacoby talked about stepping. This is one that we did recently about modern gospel um, featuring... Uh, Carrie just did this beautiful mix with like all this gospel music. It's just a delight to listen to. I highly recommend it. Um, and then every single episode, every day, every week, Jacob, you want to give it to him? Some good news <laughs> to get you through the weekend, which uh, so far this week, it's uh, a lot of festivals. In fact, today's episode, our good news was that we were going to be here with you all. Uh, yeah. Monday was the uh, Pride Arts Film Festival that's running throughout June and July in Chicago. Tomorrow is the Puerto Rican Fest, returning to Humble Park uh, starting on Thursday. And it'll run Thursday through Sunday. They'll have a domino tournament, uh, carnival games, and then the parade will kick off on uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, in Humble Park. It's going to be a, a fantastic time out there. There are about seven or eight festivals happening this week slash weekend in Chicago. And so... Each day we try to, you know, regardless of what the story is, if it's funny, if it makes you cry, if it enrages you, we try to leave you with something you can do in this city to feel a little bit more connected, a little bit more uh, curious. It's the thing too listeners have really responded to, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's a beautiful early on from like the beginning from the beginning, because, you know, I hope our bosses aren't watching, but they've accused us as being a little too serious sometimes about the news. And we're like, well, this is a serious city, but it's also, we all, it's also a beautiful city and it's also has so much culture and there's so much that we love about it. That's why we challenge it. Cause we love it. So that is really had been has been really important like don't just point out what's wrong we want to celebrate what's so great about it too um so these are some headlines from our newsletter and some some clips from our newsletter which again our, sydney madden is our newsletter writer she is awesome um seriously follow the newsletter for no other reason just to find joy in her emoji like she like <laughs> oh my god she's just one of my one of my favorite writers in chicago period um so the newsletter has a lot of the same things as the podcast, but of course presents it in a different way. Cover must know news. Um, we are constantly looking for ways that you can act, take action. We just did a big thing. It was like one of our most clicked things about how to how to get that Google money. There's going to be a Google settlement, privacy settlement. Do you guys know about? Have this? you guys heard about okay, this? Of course. I'm like, oh it's my not gosh, a, like, not this a scam. Room doesn't I was going to say. I didn't, I didn't get my Facebook money because I thought it was a fucking scam. <laughs> it was four hundred dollars. Now, Google might get I ain't going to miss yeah. that $400 you gotta twice. Out, you got to fill out those forms. <laughs> we got the Facebook money. Sorry um, for cursing, by the way. It, just, <laughs> it happens. Uh, My apologies. You know, the baby formula for shortage, obviously a huge issue. Really directing people to, hey, here's where to find formula. Here's how you can give formula. Here's how you can can participate in this. And then we are constantly asking our readers and listeners to give us their ideas, to tell us their opinions, because that's kind of where the best stuff comes from. When we know that the audience that you guys are like, you know, engaged, paying yeah. attention, listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I almost included a screenshot of our pegs calendar. Uh, <laughs> we have this calendar where Sydney keeps track of, I never knew a city could have so many events. It's, it, it's, it's really it's, unbelievable. It's overwhelming to see and we, she curates those and finds the best stuff, the most interesting stuff, uh, all across the city. It's all across like, the city, all truly across, like, across, which is really city. important. It's really, really critical. I mean, to interrupt you. It's no. really critical to our mission. Yeah, like we that like our city. We talk to all seventy-seven neighborhoods. Do we do it every? No. Do we do it well? No. We need help. Like you know, like, but we do really, really try to highlight and speak to the entire city. That is really critical. Um, we do. And one place you see that is in our events. And these are just some of our Friday headlines of events you could find. And I, I don't know if that doesn't interest you. I, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, another thing we do, and we do this in the podcast too, uh, but, but in the newsletter, it's really fun to kind of break format and to just say, you know, hey, we kind of need to talk out some stuff. This is an excerpt uh, from the top story after the mass shooting in Texas. Um, and I think we were feeling as a team, just like, God, shit is hard right now. It is really hard 
and it was we were trying to figure out you know as a news team what you want to do is you want to say okay well what is a news story we can do in this what's yeah. an angle on this yeah. how can how can chicago talk about this what does we do and sydney sort of had the idea to say what if we just each shared what was kind of getting us through a moment of joy that got us through um and we sort of wrote this reflection to top it off to say like look here is all the stuff that's going on and here's why it's so hard and get to that emotional you know the emotional effect of the news rather than just the news itself right because that is sort of just as important to talk about and it's what again it's what we're experiencing it's what the audience is experiencing and so um that was I, I was really proud of that when we did that I think it was a really good move I think less and less now the public understands that journalists also have feelings and anyone who's had to I mean I was definitely in the newsroom on Sandy Hook and I definitely cried and you know like that of course this affects us you know of course covering tough stuff and especially gun violence in Chicago and that every politician loves to talk about Chicago incorrectly like it wears on us so you know I it is that it's our humanity and that is what comes through so much with Jacoby I think as well as the host oh we can talk about the formation of CityCast so a question we get asked a lot um which is like how do you make your money <laughs> where, where do you come from who asked that we <laughs> literally <laughs> everybody literally everybody asked that because we're a podcast and everyone's like, how do podcasts make money? Um, right. The short answer to that question is podcasts, as a general rule, make money through advertisement. We uh, are not sort of a, a, a rinky-dink startup four-person team just out here on our own. We're actually part of a network of um, podcasts and newsletters uh, sort of popping up around the country. Chicago and Denver were the first two to launch around the same time, March of 2021, uh, last year. and um, We were first, though. We, we were first. We were first by a week like at a, least. I was like a, a couple of days. Yeah. But, but we were first. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we claim it. We we constantly claim it. All the we time. love our Denver colleagues. Um, and basically the concept was, uh, you know, you know, no one's really done a daily news podcast for a local audience before because, as I said, podcasts generally make money through ads. It's not really scalable, right? If you're only working in one market, but if you can create a network then you can scale up ads and maybe you can turn a profit. Um, we're not sure yet, but we're on our way. <laughs> um, and I think it's important to note, like just real quick, of yeah. like a startup, right? Like I came from obviously a big news organization and everyone was like, you're leaving a big news organization for a startup. We are a startup project, but we are owned by a corporation. Yes. We're owned by the Graham That's Holdings company which used to own the Washington Post and have a lot of other so you know we are a startup project but we are funded through a company and obviously that's kind of the thing that makes us work and allows us to kind of scale up quickly which is what we've done over the past year <laughs> these are the cities that we are currently operating in and then DC and Portland Boise literally just want launched like today today two days ago today uh and DC Portland coming soon um you know, we are trying to sort of reach that that saturation quickly um, so that we can kind of achieve the the vision of um, our big bosses. But we have time to ramp that up because we have these corporate backers behind us, uh, which I got to say, as a journalist from public radio who <laughs> like gr growth was a was a four letter word, like it was just a, <laughs> kind of a nightmare. Um, so it's been really fun to to work with like really ambitious and like really hungry uh uh journalists and and like non-journalists to to kind of make this work so that's the citycast network um i'm just curious like why these particular cities like looking at this list yeah. it is a little bit of a hot pot, so I'm just curious. totally random right um so i can tell you here's what i can tell you uh denver has some of the highest podcast listening per capita in the country so that was sort of an obvious choice um from what I understand that they knew they really wanted to do like a major market in LA and a New York, a, a Chicago and Chicago was sort of the, um, uh, where the talent was. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> frankly, like that was, it was sort of the most salient of, of those, of those markets. Um, because there are, you know, it was just like, there wasn't really any competition, particularly in the, in the podcast space. Um, and it was sort of an unknown as to like what, how this would do. The other cities, some of the things they have in common are um, they're growing cities. These are places where people are moving to. Um, 
especially these Western cities, they're younger, they're a little techier, they have fairly high podcast listening. Um, Pittsburgh is kind of the, the odd one out, frankly, <laughs> on this list. I don't know that much about Pittsburgh, but I, it, I know it's also growing and also has a really growing tech scene, um, which tends to correlate a little bit. I wish I had numbers for you, but I don't, I'm sorry, uh, with, with podcast listening to some degree. So that's kind of what's going on there. Um, one thing I will say, just as a small thing, like one thing I love about all of these, despite them, like they're part of a system and right, the drawing and the author is the same. I listen to those shows and I feel lost. <laughs> I don't know the streets they're referencing or the cultural things mm -hmm. they're referencing because they're not trying to talk to a national audience in a generic way to bring in a bunch of people from everywhere. It's if you want to know about Chicago, come listen to us. And, and we'll explain acronyms and we'll break things down. We won't pretend like everybody knows everything because we don't. But we, but we are Chicago in the same ways that CityCast, Boise, and Houston. It's they, they really speak to their cities in such a way that I think is impressive every time I listen to somebody else's show. Yeah, I agree. I think that's been that was kind of an early challenge too mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. our bosses who don't live here were like. I don't know. I mean, this has got to be a big story. We're like, that's not a big story here. Like, honestly, it's a big story for you on the outside looking in on Chicago, but for Chicagoans, it's not really what they're talking about, you know? And that's the idea. That's the goal. I mean, we're not going to explain the CTA to you. We'll talk about the CTA and what's happening on the CTA, but you know what the CTA is. If you don't, it's the Chicago Public Transit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, maybe, maybe you took it today. Um, <laughs> This is a list of things that make us work. Do you want to go? Do we want to run through it or? I know we need to wrap up. So yeah, yeah we're a, we're a small but powerful team. Obviously, it's the three of us and our our newsletter writer. Um, and you know, it's been like all of you probably. I'm sure many of you have done startups. I know Derek, you started a company and stuff like. You know, there's a lot of learning involved, and so the, all these new cities that we just pointed out. Frankly, a lot of them are learning from our mistakes and also learning from our successes and what we've learned um, to do right. Teamwork, obviously, we are, <laughs> we're all very efficient, so we kind of have this rhythm that we don't, I don't even need to tell Simone, she can jump in and do this, Jacoby's on this, I'm on this, you know, whatever. I think something that's, that our boss, David Plotz, who pointed out really early on to me that I thought was really important, is like we're never gonna like we're never gonna talk bad about our other colleagues in the media because that was important because i can't i you know those are my friends <laughs> i worked with them for a long time i was in press conferences next to them and this doesn't work unless we are collaborators we don't have a newsroom like the daily can jump into the new york times newsroom we don't have a newsroom so we the, seriously the entire city's Media, those that's our newsroom, <laughs> you know. In case like, you were curious by comparison, we're a team of four. The Daily has a team of 19 people just on the podcast. Right, right. <laughs> just in case you were curious. So it's like, but it, it is, it was hard. In the beginning days, it was like, who are you? And it was kind of like, well, like it was a lot of relying on my Rolodex to be like, yeah, you know, I'm over here now. I'm not at the BZ, but like, it's awesome to see after a year and a half, how many more people are coming to us. Hey, I want to talk to Jacoby. You think Jacoby will interview me? I'm like, mm, okay, maybe. Um, but you know, we had to we had to prove ourselves and also make it clear we're sticking around. We're here, but we all, you know, the I think that old school of every you know reporters compete with the other one and knock them. Out. I mean, that's that's not what we do. We're not breaking news, right? But we're all. I think we're all collaborators. That's how I would see it. Is that what you mean by making friends? That is what I meant by making <laughs> friends. That's exactly what I meant. Shameless um, plugs, I'm not sure. What that is. Shameless plugs is how we market ourselves. We have to do, we do a lot of this. Yeah. You know, I mean, we. It's a lot of explaining. It's a lot of this and it's a lot of out there and making sure every time Jacoby gets asked to do something, he does it, frankly. <laughs> and that's a lot of work, you know? So we're trying to scale that and figure out how to do it. But the company has grown, right? Now we have a marketing person and we have ad people. We had like, I think in our beginning days, maybe eight of us on a Zoom screen, it was, 10 of yeah. us. Now there's 40 or 50. So, you know, the growth is pretty consistent and constant. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the long and short of it. That's City Cash Chicago. Uh, so thank you.
Jacoby, I listen, I'm a big listener. I've heard you talk a lot about this. What's the thing that frustrates you the most hearing like national news podcasts cover Chicago compared to how you might approach it? Um, I think people talk about Chicago, particularly when we're thinking about like uh, violence as as if we're sacrificial, as if our lives don't matter or our pain doesn't matter. Uh, I had a guest that said something the other day that really hit me from Ergo Radio. He said the way they talk about violence is like it's baseball cards or baseball stats with 10% up now or 10% down now, this many people this, this day, this many people that. And I don't think people know how like, traumatizing that is for us or how hurtful that is because many of us know that this violence is not random. It is uh, built into the systems that are Chicago and were then exported to every other major city in America. And so I, I think it's really important for people to constantly talk about us with nuance and context, uh, other than the way they talk about us now. I hate when people generalize, like they say the South Side like I remember talking to a national reporter during some big event and I was like, you know the South Side's huge, right? You know there's lots of different people there and lots of different neighborhoods. And also all those, you know, people live there. They go to school there. They, they celebrate with their families there. Like, would you like someone to come in and say like, blah, 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 neighborhood? And the West Side and, you know, we are a city of neighborhoods, but I think that generalization takes away about how multifaceted and beautiful and complex that we are. Um, I, but the violence thing too, I think is really, really hard. Hi, uh, I was wondering, what do you think are the most important things to keep in mind when telling stories about Chicago, really in any medium, um, podcast or otherwise? I would say check your, check your, check yourself, check your <laughs> stereotypes, check your assumptions. Um, you know, that, I think that goes for every journalist. I think you learn to do that. Um, and I, I just kind of just echoing, like, don't just go into a place, a, a, telling the people who live there what's important in that neighborhood, ask them what's important, and also don't just show up when shit's bad. Mm -hmm. Show up when all the stuff is good, because it's all the time. Um, and don't assume, don't assume you know what's important to people, you know, and, and where. Like, people need... I think that's a big point. I think City Bureau does it so well is like we realize like I used to really struggle with this at WBZ is like all these insider stories about and this is not just BZ, this is the papers like about what this politician is doing. This politician like people don't know who their alderman is most of the time, right? Like tell them how they can like get a pothole fixed, right? Like that's the stuff people care about. Like I can give you an exact example. I remember when the library branches were a bunch of them closed, right? A library that's central to a community. And when they were reopening, I said to a reporter like, hey, when you're at City Hall, can you get some quotes on da 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 da? And it was like, well, so-and-so's press person just said this. And, and I was like, nobody care. Nobody in the public cares about what the press person said. They care if the library is going to be open, right? So I think that is important. My, I, I would just add on to that. My tip is always go further back in the history than you think you have to. Um, you know, I, I think we learned this, uh, particularly with like the Cabrini Green, when we looked at Cabrini Green and we looked at the history there, it's one thing to talk about 2011 when the last towers came down. It's one thing to talk about 96, right? When, when they're making that announcement, but you really got to go back to, you know, the great migration, frankly, um, to really understand the the history of that and that's almost always true with any topic whether it's transportation whether it's government yeah. um whether it's corruption what you know crime whatever it is go back further in the history than you think you have to then one thing i would add to that is just ask yourself how does segregation impact this topic <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter what you're talking about brownies pipes street names where museums are which pools are open you know how quick an alder person responds. Ask yourself, does segregation impact this? And the answer is yes. Yes. Hey, so uh, big fan. Really cool that y'all are here. Really cool. It's like oh, okay. weird seeing y'all because I've been listening to y'all for like a year. <laughs> and so now I like it's cool to put faces to the names um, or faces to the voices. So two questions. One, um, 
I got a newsletter today, another one uh, where a publication was talking about that their story had led to direct action. And they said like, so we wrote this story on Thursday and on Monday this happened. Do y'all have any examples of your work catalyzing action? And if so, what are they? The second question is what, what topics are y'all raring to cover? What, what topics do y'all want to cover but have not been able to and why not? The first one, one that I think about, and shout out to one of our roving producers, Natalie Rivera. We were doing a big story last, I want to say last December about Shot Spotter, which is the gunshot, oh, last August, right, about gunshot uh, tracking technology, which has been placed around the city, largely on, on the south and west sides, and listens, apparently listens for gunshots and is able to like triangulate to bring police. That is what they claim. Research has been done that argues y'all might not be doing a good job at that, might be a lot of false alarms, and you might be bringing police to situations more aggressive and more on edge than need be. And about 90% of these don't lead to anything. So many journalists around the city of Chicago, you saw so much organizing happen around get rid of shot spotter, get rid of shot spotter. Then we did a little bit of research just to find out the city sort of, I don't know if it's, I don't know if secret is the right word, but quietly re-upped their contract with ShotSpotter. And so we were able to help break that news, which allowed people to just start having different conversations about it because so much of us were talking about, we can stop this, we can keep them from getting a new contract, but that wasn't the truth. It was too late. And so it, it helped organizers sort of change their tactics and uh, you know, a lot of stories and uh, a lot of outlets in Chicago had to cover it differently. And, and I think it's brought more scrutiny and more accountability to the surveillance age that we live in now. Um, and again, that that was thanks to so many other outlets and organizers, but Natalie Rivera, our roving producer, really tracked down that information and, and you saw it have an impact. It was actually just a simple fact check. Mm -hmm. Like I said, go go ask the mayor these few three questions and they came back and said, well, actually we already, we actually renewed the contract. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like there's like all these people organizing and like we had to tell the organizers, hey, and they were like, what? So yeah. No, that's a good one. Uh, well, uh, so, so in a different kind of, so I think that's probably the kind of impact you were asking about, but in a kind of different way, um, I have talked on the show about how I love jigsaw puzzles uh, a couple different times. And I, a listener wrote in and was like, I also love jigsaw puzzles. I have a collection of a million and she and I are going to do a puzzle swap. <laughs> and so I point that out to say, like, when we talk about impact journalism, like that is a, like, by my talking about it on the show, like, now I'm going to meet a new person, possibly make a new friend, and she's going to get a new puzzle. Like, that's real tangible, something that's happened be, as a result of the show. Um, and so I think that's also important to talk about. You had another question about um, things Anything we haven't covered that, yeah. we, that we're raring to. So much. I'm, I'm ready to grill the mayor. Honestly, I've done my jumping jacks. I've done my push-ups. I've done, I've done my, you know, a couple thousand hours ramped up with, you know, Ferguson and R. Woody and, and Martinez. I, I, I think it's time to talk to Lightfoot and, and have a, a nice one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm, I'm ready for that. Uh, no, no, you go, you go. I mean, there are, definitely, there are definitely blind spots for us. I think, you know, like we don't cover enough business. Um, you know, we would all admit we should do better in covering the Latino community mm -hmm. than we do. Um, I, yeah, so many. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't have, I know, I, I, yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot. I think one thing I would really like to do is, um, and I think we're starting to get there, is I, I'd like to find a way to, to cover gun violence in Chicago with a little more um, depth and regularity. Um, but it's just a really hard, if you want to do it well, um, it is really, really hard to do, particularly with a small team, particularly when you have daily deadlines um, that, you're, that you're trying to meet. Um, but I think that's sort of, I think that's something that, the audience is hungry for and i think it's something that um we could do if we like if we could could hit the the standard we want to hit it would just be um you wouldn't see anything else like it in the media ecosystem uh also a listener one of the things that i really like about y'all's show is that you do let your own emotions and opinions come through sometimes how do you balance the requirement for journalistic objectivity with your own feelings about a story 
Uh, me personally, I just I lean into my producers, right? I, I try to constantly locate where the line is to make sure I'm that I, I'm being respectful, I'm being thoughtful. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've cried in my interviews. I've I've viscerally gotten mad and and, uh, and upset. Uh, and in those moments, I try to remind myself: one, it is a privilege to be this informed, mm -hmm. and so I don't want to take that lightly. And two. I also have to remind myself, I'm, a, I'm both, it is a show that is, you know, somewhat about me and, and my story and how I see the city, but the story is, the show is not about me and it's not for me. And so in those moments, I have to make sure that, that my emotions are productive to your experience listening and your experience trying to stay informed uh, be, because uh, you you might be experiencing it differently, and so and so I I want to make sure that I don't, you know, uh, kind of move too far in one direction, and and, and kind of make it a, all about me. I'll also say, you know, as someone who has to produce Jacoby, um, it, it's kind of a dream, right, to have a host who's willing to to go to those places. Um, and from my perspective, like when I am in that interview or I'm cutting that tape, what I'm sort of thinking is, number one, feelings are based in fact, like that there there's an emotional truth to every factual story, right? And, and that is sort of part, part of reporting is like identifying what is the emotional truth of the person asking the question, the person answering the question, and how do we synthesize those things, right? Um, and I think then the sort of next part of producing on top of that is when you have a really emotional moment, it's like, is this a moment that's gonna turn an audio, the listener off or is this a moment that's gonna make them engage more? Because as our, boss David Plotz is fond of saying podcasts are really excellent is a really excellent medium for uh conveying emotion and it's actually not that effective of a medium for conveying information it's like you can't listen to num like a bunch of numbers in a row right and so I think you know it, it's it's not just like how do you balance those things it's actually necessary for for Jacoby to go to those places and for for us to hear that as a listener, both from the guest and from our host, in order for the information and the truth of the matter to be conveyed. Yeah. Great question. I think that's a good note to end on. So thank you. Everybody. Thank y'all. Thank y'all.